Peace be to this house. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church and School. And a blessed All Saints Day to you as well, as we remember the faithful departed, um, and as we uh, consider what God has done for them and for us in creating faith in Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit in us. Um, I refer you to our bulletin, page two, kind of that inside of the front cover, as we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper today, um, our, our uh, statement on what the Lord's Supper is and, and how we uh, celebrate that here at Trinity is, is spelled out there. Um, uh, sp- an announcement to make to you, um, uh, a happy one, that uh, I'm pleased to inform you that um, Everett J. Root was baptized this past Wednesday, that is the uh, new, newborn son of Evan and Emily Root, um, and we rejoice with them and that their son was brought to um, the, the waters of holy baptism this, this past Wednesday. I believe we have a few announcements um, from, from a handful of people. Good morning. I'm Pat Heyer, and I'm here on behalf of the Board of Human Care. It's hard to believe Thanksgiving's less than three weeks away, and the Board of Human Care again this year will be giving $25 gift cards to Walmart to members of the school and church who are in need. Actually, we plan to give two gift cards because of the cost of everything going up. So we're planning to send those out the week before Thanksgiving, both after church this week and next week. I'll be selling the gift cards outside the library. So we um, ask for your generous contribution for helping those um, who are in need right now. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Stewardship, we would just like to keep in front of you the Curtin ISL, excuse me, ILSTO campaign. That is one of the primary ways that we provide scholarships to our students at school. Holidays are coming up. If you have family or friends who are Iowa taxpayers and would be interested in donating to a worthy charity, Trinity Lutheran School, Cedar Rapids, and would like to receive a 75% state tax credit, as well as a federal benefit on taxes uh, next year, this is a great way to do it. It's a win-win. Forms are there on the stand in front of the piano. Take some and pass them out at the holidays. And you'll see where we're at. If you look at the announcement, you can see we're just under $20,000 regarding our personal Trinity goal. So let's keep at it. Thank you.
Please turn in your hymnals to page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please turn in your bulletin to the intro it. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. Into your hands I commit my spirit. You have Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading for All Saints Day is from Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes? And... From where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. The epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, 
for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we observe the Feast of All Saints. Listen to the description of this day from the Treasury of Daily Prayer. This feast is the most comprehensive of the days of commemoration, encompassing the entire scope of that great cloud of witnesses with which we are surrounded, Hebrews 12.1. It holds before the eyes of faith that great multitude which no man can number, all the saints of God in Christ from every nation, race, culture, and language, who have come out of the great tribulation, who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, Revelation 7. As such, it sets before us the full height and depth and breadth and length of our dear Lord's gracious salvation, Ephesians 3. It shares with Easter a celebration of the resurrection, since all those who have died with Christ Jesus have also been raised with him, Romans 6. It shares with Pentecost 
a celebration of the ingathering of the entire church Catholic in heaven and on earth, in all times and places, in the one body of Christ, in the unity of the Spirit, in the bond of peace. Just as we have all been called to the one hope that belongs to our call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all, Ephesians 4. And the Feast of All Saints shares with the final Sundays of the church year an eschatological focus on the life everlasting and a confession that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us, Romans 8. In all of these emphases, the purpose of this feast is to fix our eyes upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, that we might not grow weary or faint-hearted, Hebrews 12. Dear friends in Christ at Trinity, in addition to all the rich teachings and exhortations and comforts that belong to All Saints Day, there is also for us this year also the beginning of our fall Christian stewardship emphasis in which our theme is honor the Lord based on Proverbs 3, 9. Now with that theme in the back of our mind and the glorious celebration of All Saints Day foremost in our mind this morning, let us direct our devout meditation to the Holy Gospel for this day, Matthew 5, 1 to 12. As the disciples of Jesus at that time came to him on the mountain and listened to Jesus as he opened his mouth and taught them, may our ears also listen to the word of Christ proclaimed today. Remembering our Lord's promise heard on Reformation Sunday, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, John 8. This week's Holy Gospel, heard every year at Trinity on All Saints Sunday, is the opening words of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which takes up three entire uninterrupted chapters in Matthew's Gospel. Christ's sermon is a magnificent message, and it begins with a profound introduction known as the Beatitudes, a ninefold pronouncement of blessedness, that state of being fortunate and happy as those upon whom God bestows mercy and favor. Who are the blessed or the blessed of whom Jesus spoke as he sat on the mountain? The poor in spirit, those who mourn, and the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, and the pure in heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And you, Jesus said to his disciples, you are blessed when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. So there it is. And now to use the Lutheran question, what does this mean? What does this mean for us? Well, before we answer that question, we need to understand what this meant to the people of the time. So consider who it was who was speaking these words. Consider that Jesus. He was the man from Nazareth who, through miracles, had quickly gained fame for himself in the region of the Jews and also in the surrounding lands as well, such that great crowds followed him, Matthew 4 tells us. And Jesus had also gained devoted disciples among them, Peter and Andrew, James and John, the fishermen from Galilee. And an unspecified number of those disciples are described as having come to Jesus there on the mountain as the Lord sat down to teach. And this Jesus was the Lord. For he was the son of the Virgin Mary, having been conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit in her, there in her womb. He was the one about whom the angel had told Joseph, you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. 
Yes, Jesus was the one who in his adulthood was baptized by John in the Jordan and then anointed by the Holy Spirit and acclaimed by the Father as his own son. Indeed, Jesus was the object then of Satan's sharp temptations in the wilderness where Jesus, although famished, abided steadfast in faith, receiving the written word of God like you also must as the only indispensable food for the soul and repelling Satan's every attack, refusing the devil's every enticement. Jesus was Emmanuel. The one sitting there on the mountain, in other words, opening his mouth that day and teaching was God. God was with them. Emmanuel, come to save. Now, when God shows mercy to his human creatures and comes among them to save, this, friends, is actually where Christian stewardship begins. Honor the Lord begins not with the hand and with our giving, but with the heart, God's heart, and with God's loving, God's giving to us. It is as if God said, here is my dear son whom I love. And since I also love you, despite your sins, I am sending him to the cross to save you. Faith must believe this. Every good work of thought, word, or deed follows and flows from the spirit-wrought faith that says, I believe that Jesus Christ, true God and true man, has redeemed me. So, the one on the mountain in Matthew 5 is the God-man. And for me, at this point, the old investment uh, commercial from my childhood comes to mind. You remember E.F. Hutton? Some of you will. When E.F. Hutton talks, the commercial said, people listen. And since he is the Lord, people should hear and listen to Jesus above any other voice. And indeed, at the end of Matthew 7, this is the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew relates to us that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who had authority. Suffice it to say, then, that the words of our text, the Beatitudes of Jesus, were divine truth. They were the sort of words which one could lay hold of and say, this is the way things will and shall be. Verily and surely. I wonder whether the hearers of Jesus, though, were at least a little <coughs> bit puzzled over what exactly they were to take from Jesus' words, how they were to apply them to their lives. The Beatitudes of Jesus, were they to be heard as commands, exhortations, as law? Have, have you ever wondered? For example, when Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, does not that seem to you as if Jesus were urging all who hear him to practice a lifestyle which is quick to show mercy to others? Or when Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart, does not that seem to you as if Jesus were exhorting his hearers to be sincere, to be godly, upright, obedient to God. And again, when Jesus speaks of peacemakers, does he not direct us to devote ourselves also to making peace where there is division and strife? I'm sure upon hearing it, those first disciples on the mountain that day had such reactions, and these are indeed natural reactions on our part to Jesus' teaching. Moreover, a heart check reveals that there is, in me as in you, a deficiency of mercy, of purity, and peacemaking. My sinfulness intrudes, sadly, every day 
in my marriage, with my children, in all my relationships. So too for Peter, Andrew, James, John, and you. So, yes, when Jesus here describes the ways of God's children in this world, then the children of God like us will readily feel that painful twinge when we recognize how our ways fail to measure up to these words of Jesus. See, every description of righteousness in the Bible has the effect of startling the heart and moving God's people to repentance. Those who hope for the day of our Savior's return, as today's epistle taught us, purify ourselves as he is pure. We purify ourselves. That is to say, we <laughs> repent. And we rush to the table of our Lord, the Lamb, where mercy is offered to us. We repent. We hurry to drench ourselves with his cleansing blood as we remember our baptism, as we hear and believe the pastor's absolution, as we feed on the gospel which is preached to us. The proper hearers of the Beatitudes of Jesus then and now are believers in Christ, those who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Beatitudes cannot be heard by the haughty and the proud, the worldly wise, but only by the meek and low and empty, the poor in spirit. The Beatitudes cannot be heard by those who are right in their own eyes, but only by those who mourn their brokenness and this world's fallenness and hunger and thirst for righteousness. To the rich and satisfied, Jesus' words are nonsense and offensive. To the wretched and needy, Jesus' words are consolation and refreshment. Yours, Jesus said, Peter, Andrew, James, John, yours is the kingdom of heaven. And yours, people of God, yours is the kingdom of heaven. Believers then and now who trust that their sins are forgiven and that they are heirs of God's heavenly kingdom solely and completely by the merits of Christ, they want to know what pleases God. They want to know how they should order their thoughts and how they should order their lives in order to honor the Lord who has done great things for them. They are not afraid of failing to meet God's mark because they know their salvation does not depend on that. But having become God's children in baptism and believing the gospel, they want to imitate the pure and godly way of Christ, who died for them and rose. Thus the Beatitudes express and describe the blessed condition as well as also the way in this world of God's children who are righteous by faith and who are beginning to exhibit qualities such as mercy and purity of heart and peacemaking and who deplore their failures in all of this but trust all the more in God's mercy. The Beatitudes state, and this is noteworthy, that these children of God for whom great joys are stored up in heaven already now are blessed, happy, fortunate. We are blessed in view of the good things to come, but we are blessed also simply in being God's children now and carrying the cross as we follow the one who carried and ascended the cross for us. As Jesus told his hearers, when you are mistreated for your allegiance to Jesus' name, leap and be glad. You are experiencing exactly what the prophets of old did. And speaking of the faithful of old, on this day we also think about the believers from among the Trinity family who have gone before us. They trusted in Christ, which was the most important thing about them. And the Beatitudes of Jesus were about them. 
They were peacemakers. They were merciful. They were pure in heart. They honored the Lord by the faith of their heart and the stewardship of his bounty entrusted to them. Yes, they did all this imperfectly according to the measure of the law, just like me and you. But in Christ, in whom they trusted, they were complete and holy and perfect. Theirs, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And in a moment, when we read their names, we can rejoice also at the thought that one day our names will be read in just this fashion in church by those who are following in our footsteps. Our faith in Christ and our stewardship of his gifts today are also an example which the coming generations will follow. Thanks be to God for his grace in Christ. And may he bring it about that our lives on this earth in some small way resemble the Christ in whom we trust and whom we love. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to stand as we confess our faith using the Nicene Creed. Together we confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and the Catholic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Please turn to your bulletin insert for the commemoration of the faithful departed. In joyful anticipation of the resurrection to eternal life through our risen Lord Jesus Christ, we remember those who have gone before us in faith to claim their heavenly home by His grace. Let us pray. Almighty God, in whose glorious presence live all who die in Christ, we give you hearty thanks for your loving kindness to all your servants who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labors. We humbly implore your mercy that we, together with all who have departed in the saving faith, may have our perfect consummation and bliss in both body and soul in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Vern Vaterbeck. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, so then whether, whether we, we live, live or, or whether, whether we, we die, die we are the Lord's. Stacy Smith. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I, I give them, them eternal, eternal life, life, and they, they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. 
Austin Ort. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we, we shall, shall certainly be united, united with, with him in a, in a resurrection, resurrection like his. Irene Sims. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Wayne Lehew. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that, that whoever, whoever believes in him should, should not, not perish, perish, but have eternal, eternal life. Dwayne Monroe. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even, even so, so, through Jesus, Jesus God will bring with him those, those who have fallen asleep. Carol Lesh. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not, not only, only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Ruth Scott. Since you have given Jesus authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him, and, and this, this is eternal, eternal life, that they know you, the only, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Karen Tai. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Patricia Schultz, our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and, and immortality, immortality to light, light through the, the gospel. gospel. Lou Colhavy, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And, and death, death shall be no more, neither, neither shall, shall there be mourning, mourning nor crying, crying nor, nor pain, pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Lowell Schrader, Lord, now you let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For, For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember with thanksgiving those who loved and served you in your church on earth and who now rest from their labors. Keep us in the faith and in everlasting fellowship with all your saints. And bring us at last to the joy of your heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. We continue with a prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, faithful God, we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things into your keeping. In your righteousness, deliver us from all that would harm the body and assault the soul. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Righteous God. Bless all ministers of the gospel and the congregations committed to their care, that the comfort of Christ's sacrifice and the joy of his resurrection may be proclaimed to all who grieve their sin and mourn their dead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we know of your deep love for us, for you have called us your children. Deepen the love of children for their parents and parents for their children. Strengthen fathers and mothers in their vocations, that they may raise their children in the way that they should go. Hear the prayers of those who long for families. Sustain all expectant mothers and their little ones. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, bless all in authority over us, especially those 
who work to bring peace and justice, that they may be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. Grant wisdom to our citizens and courage and competence to our leaders. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are our rock and fortress in our distress. Hear our prayers for those who are sick, suffering or recovering from illness or injury, especially Ron, Daryl, Steve, Julia, Jeremy, Carmody, Lyle, Karen, Karen, Haley, Marilyn, Adeline, Henrietta, Dick, Carol, and Gwen. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who are nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, eternal Father, though death still claims our mortal bodies, you have raised up Christ that we may pass through death to our own joyful resurrection and to the great reunion with those who have died in Christ and now rest from their labors. Receive our thanks for all the saints and for their witness and hear us on behalf of those who mourn the loss of those they love. Bring us at last to the place of everlasting light and life that we may see you face to face and live in your presence forevermore through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver, and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.